Hey, what's up everyone? So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about SecOps Group, their certifications, and the path of what Sid actually got into why he started this company. So go ahead and introduce yourself and who's Sid? Okay, <laughs> thank you, Matt. Thanks, thanks for having me. So for those of you who don't know, uh, I have been in cybersecurity for nearly 17 years now. Um, you know, I have been a speaker at Black Hat for nearly 10, 12 years. Um, speaker, Black Hat, DEF CON, OWASP, you know, the usual um, hacker stint, which is articles, exploit, books, white papers, advisories, those kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So in my early days, I was quite active on the research scene. And I would find ways to get into a conference and that became a pattern. And then from there, um, you know, I started a business in 2013. I transitioned from a techie to an entrepreneur in 2013. I started a business called Not So Secure. Some people may have heard of it. It was mm -hmm. a very, very popular business still. Um, that business was known for its training. Uh, you know, at the peak, um, we were doing a lot of trainings at Black Hat. Um, so I sold that business to Claranet Group in 2018, and I had an exit. Uh, but being an entrepreneur, once you have bitten the apple, you want to get back, go back to it. You know, you can't just. Uh, you are not built to go to the beach and and just rest. So I guess I'm I'm one of those cursed guys. Um, so I decided three years later after selling the first one that I want to do it again. Um, so I started SecOps Group. But yeah, before I talk about SecOps Group, um, you know, I have deep root into the education sector. I have personally been a trainer at so many conferences. Um, I, I built a training business which would do, you know, which will train uh, some uh, before pandemic when the trainings, the training industry was flourishing. You know, mm -hmm. we would train something like 600 people at Black Hat conferences alone. This is that mm -hmm. is Black Hat USA alone. Now, after the pandemic, there has been a little decline in the industry itself. So, you know, um, but yeah, so this is this is where we are um, now. Yeah, so that, that's a little introduction about me before I go into what SecOps do and what we do. What 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 are the clever things we are doing? Yeah, so awesome. That's definitely some awesome stuff. And I'm going to be heading out there this week, not Black Hat. I wish I was uh, out there, but I'll be at DEF CON, so hopefully we get to link up. So for everyone that's watching, watch to the end. We have some cool, cool announcement to make towards the end of it and uh, you know some codes so you can get some cool discounts. But uh, yeah, so continue with your uh, story about SecOps Group. And sure, what, sure. Just quickly, I'm actually currently in Las Vegas. I'm, it's my hotel in, in Luxor. So if, if uh, you and or your, or your audience, if anybody happens to be at DEF CON Black Hat, please do hook me up. And, um, you know, I would love to catch up with the community. That's um, we are very passionate about um, the InfoSec community. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, there is a business angle to it. I will not want to hide behind it. Uh, we, we are entrepreneurs. We, we are running a business. But at the same time, we are very passionate about this InfoSec community. And one of the ethos of InfoSec community is to give back. The more you give back, generally, the, the principles are you will receive more love and love and other things that comes with it. So mm -hmm. I, I totally subscribe to that philosophy. I've always been a follower of that. In fact, um, you know, uh, just this morning we had a little tie up with um, the Black Girls Hack community. So we are giving away some free exams to that community as well. So irrespective, you know, we are very happy to just link up with people and infosec community. Okay, uh, so that's that done. Let's talk about SecOps Group. <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> what what we are doing? Okay, so SecOps Group is um, a small boutique consultancy business. Uh, consultancy business. We have two arms. We have. Um, a consultancy arm in which we do pen testing. Uh, we do very good pen testing. We work with some Fortune 100 companies. We are a small boutique team of 20 consultants. I am a firm believer that pen testing is best done by small companies, where mm -hmm. the team is um, very rigorously managed. The, the when you when the consultancy companies stretch to 200 plus people, you know, then inevitably the quality will run thin, no matter how good your process is, because pen testing is at the end of the day a very highly manually driven business. Mm -hmm. You know with the processes and people and quality controls in place. So um, fortunately, we are still 20 people team and we would don't want to grow it to 200 people team. And we are very passionate about what we do. I am a very, um, you know, fortunately in today's day and age, the tools are so mature that, uh, you know, Burp Suite has now got, I don't know what, how many features. And yeah. every, day, every day, James Cattle is just pushing out features uh, at a breakneck speed. It's very difficult to, to keep up. And while it is exciting for the industry to have, you know, all these tools available at their disposal, when I was doing, pen, when I started doing pen testing, this is, going, this is going a little off topic, but I think your community might love this chat. When I was, when I started doing pen testing, you know, I remember the days where Burp was not there. So we used to use something called Paros Proxy. 
uh, but <laughs> you might be too young to use Peros proxy. Did you use Peros proxy ever? No. No. Uh, that was a horrible, horrible uh, back in the days. It used to crash more times than it would run. But every bug back then, you know, was made up of blood, sweat, and tears. And it was so much fun. Nowadays, bugs come in quite easily. Um, one of my um, complaints about bug bounty culture is that consultants don't always understand the ins and outs of a full consultancy experience. Mm -hmm. uh, when we are trying to hire pen testers, you know, we often would get consultants who are very good in identifying one or two or maybe a few handful class of bugs and spraying it across targets and earning themselves good bounty. Now, that is not pen testing, right? That is you can, that pen testing is much more thorough in nature. You mm -hmm. the client is paying you to assess the application against a variety of things. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's not necessarily asking you to only find bugs, which he was also asking you to assess the application thoroughly. And sometimes it means you will also have to report the positive findings. Look, you know, mm -hmm. the application's XML parsing module was absolutely perfect and we didn't find any XXCs or, you know, mm -hmm. any OAuth related flaws, etc. So anyways, so that's just a little me passionate about quality controls and that's what we have under the pen testing side of the business. Coming to the main part, the main agenda of this podcast, <laughs> I keep going, I keep going um, off track. So um, we, um, in the previous business, I was deep rooted into, tech, into trainings and while training is a good business, um, you know, trainings are hard work because obviously mm -hmm. in order to man manage a, a five days training course, you know, just bear with me a second. Somebody knocking on my door. Can, can you just, uh, sorry, can you please leave me alone for a few minutes? Back yes, you? yes, yes. Thank you. Sorry, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. The joys of doing podcast um, from from the hotel room. Anyways, so look, um, yeah, the, the problem of with running training business is that um, you know ma maintaining the quality mm -hmm. as the training catalog expands can be quite a quite a bit of a challenge. Okay, so I didn't want it to, uh, and the, uh, the the model, the training model, um, if you look at the industry. Everybody is following the same principle, wherein they would put out a training course, and at the mm -hmm. end of the training course, there will be a customary one-hour exam, if mm -hmm. at all, right? And my school of thought has always been: look, if you are the training authority, and then you are also providing the exams, then you know the, there is a little there is a little conflict of interest here. Then the, the authenticity part in the exam uh, is a little bit diluted, in in my opinion. Fair so enough. What I wanted to do was I wanted to just focus on creating good quality exam content mm -hmm. okay, and publish a detailed exam syllabus uh, that look, we are going to train you on pen testing um, and think of it like a pen tester who has been doing pen testing for two, three plus years, right? Mm -hmm. You have to again, go and sit in a training course to pass an exam. Then I think something is going wrong with the industry, right? It's like a driving exam. You have to renew your driving exam. Uh, you, but you've been driving for three, four years. So do you again want to go and take the driving lessons or yeah. you should be able to pass? That's a good point. That's a good analogy. You know, yeah. so I said, look, let's not follow the herd. Let's just create the exams. So um, we ended up creating some exams um, and publishing the exam syllabus. And then in order to help people prepare for it, uh, we didn't want it to offer full fledged trainings. We listed some free content available on the Internet you know, which people can refer to and they are generic mm -hmm. training materials available. We are not affiliated with those training materials. They are just a freely or paid available material that we have linked on our website, which can help them prepare for this exam. And our, our ideology is go and prepare for it. However you see fit, you may yep. already be prepared for it mm -hmm. uh, and take these exams and then, uh, yeah. And then uh, make So our objective was make really good exams, make them a, make these exams affordable to the community, right? Yeah. One of the other problems is some of these exams, I mean, um, you know, uh, Offsec run some really good exams, but $1,200, $2,000 per exam, not yeah. everybody can afford to pay pay from their own pocket, right? Yeah. So especially um, countries, people are from outside United States or Canada, you know, yeah. that's, that's a lot of money. There are quite a few other narratives that we wanted to change with the exams because, um, you know, the narrative of, trying harder i've subscribed yeah. to but look, yeah. do you actually need somebody to spend 24 hours to, to pass the exam yeah i mean is is that narrative ever going to change i mean trying harder is one thing but losing your work life balance is another thing exactly so if you can't create an exam in which you can test somebody's skill sets in a 7 4 to 7 hour window then in my opinion you are doing something wrong mm -hmm. okay 
and and uh, so you know so so that is so those are some of the narratives that we wanted to change the other narrative was you know reporting or soft skills now i am not saying that soft skills are not important in pen testing soft skills are important part of consultancy how do mm-hmm. you communicate your findings to the client is is an important feature however if you, english is not your first language there are a lot of pen testers out there who don't speak very good english but they are amazing hackers you know bugbounty yeah. has has proved that model right yeah. so yes some of these entries um, the 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 barrier the you know the the barriers to entry yeah very good yeah. those right and saying look if you can hack you can pass this exam so our mm-hmm. exams are mainly you know ctf style exams where people can um, do the challenge of obtain the flag submit the flag and they get the results then and there they don't have to wait for a week etc yeah. uh, to get the result uh, plus a number of other things you don't have to schedule the exam it's online and on demand you know yeah once you purchase the exam it's available to you in your exam portal you can take it any time you like yeah. you know there's no expiry date set so with all these things thrown into we feel that we are creating a modern next generation pen testing exams is still early days for us as a business but i hope in 3 4 years time when we review this uh, podcast again uh, yeah. we can say yes we did something right back then <laughs> yeah no most definitely and, and i obviously i took some of the beta ones that you you know hooked me up with and i thought it was really really informative right like the stuff is out there on the internet it's not you're not vpning into a, an environment right. that you just like this is really out there like it's it's out on the internet so right, right. that's what that's one thing i really enjoyed it's like oh shit like this is not just you know some you know sandbox so, environment that absolutely one of the other narratives that we wanted to change was um you know pen testing is not exploit writing okay pen yeah. testing is is pen testing and pen testing involves use of internet in fact yep. one of yep. the essential skills of pen testing is searching for the existing knowledge base Uh, exactly so the existing knowledge base for the right answer and then mm-hmm. applying that answer either in its uh, in either in the format that it is available or in, or in changing it into a format that is applicable to your context and then mm-hmm. utilizing it and and uh, so having those exams in which you are not allowed to use internet okay <laughs> to me to me breaks the definition of pen testing to some extent okay. no and, and that's a very valid point right so so we wanted to run exams in which we give them the true real world pen testing scenarios so people can navigate away from the screen people can use internet people can use books whatever yep. they want to feel like and people can run any tools they so they wish some of these exams you're not allowed to run metasploit yeah some of like exams you're not allowed to run sql map yeah why why yeah i mean how many pen tests have i done in which i have to manually write a buffer overflow code yeah no. right <laughs> hardly so, ever so, so yeah. as much as i would like to uh, buy this philosophy of right where everybody should be able to code python and write exploits the the reality is that uh, you may not be an exploit writer but you may still yeah. be a fine pen tester exactly I, i'm a prime example of that and that's what i convey all the time because i use scripts online like if i'm not going to reinvent the wheel right right Right. I I can I can read Python but I'm not going to be at, you know ex- writing exploits and doing all that stuff when there's stuff out there that I can just download tweak and you know reuse. Right so, right right. And and there was and there, there were some challenges so here's a good uh, example if I can you know cite it out without giving too much away about the exams. Um so for example we wanted to allow people to run any tools that they want. Now mm-hmm. the problem with doing that, the tools nowadays is pretty good, <laughs> pretty damn good, right? Yeah. So the moment somebody runs a Burp Pro or some other tools against the against these exams, the likelihood are, uh, hey, you go uh, another tab, all these flags are available. So pop it <laughs> in, and everybody's a pen tester. So we wanted to, so that took some engineering. Okay, so yeah. we have to put some quirks into it so that it does not become very one o one or two o one for people to. um run tools for example you know um, just to cite one example if you want to assess somebody's skill on how to exploit sql injection right mm-hmm. and you still want to give them um you know um tools like like um like sql map or burp suite etc mm-hmm. then there are still ways in which you can configure a challenge people can still run burp people can still run sql map however it will not be a case of running one throwing one command line into it you know and and getting the output you may and that is what we've done with i don't want to give too much away on how yeah. we did it and not configured it but mm-hmm. uh, all in all it's a very real world scenario you know 
you you can run any tool you want we haven't in, we we didn't want to, to spend too much time to engineer the challenge in a way that we will take away the real world aspect of it absolutely makes sense yeah that's that's totally cool and, and i like hope i can take those you know the, the real examples like i said i only took the beta one and other folks out there actually have the you know have the ability once we can you know finish this we get that little code yeah, and, yeah. and and we can really try this and what i would like everyone to do if you guys are watching this and if you go about getting this go ahead and tag us on linkedin or whatever and showcase what you've done and when you pass so we can give you the kudos because I really want to I, I love showing the the gratitude for those folks that, you know, at least us or myself has made an impact in their life. Right. So it's like just that, like, oh, hey, like from this little podcast, just from what Summit just said in two seconds, that shit fucking that helped me out, you know, do do something or see something from a different perspective. So, yeah. So do you want to go ahead and uh, share your screen and showcase what, what you got? You. Yeah. Yep. So if, if people can see my screen here, can they? Can yep. they pass? Okay. Yeah. So yep. No. Are yep. All of our exams. Okay. We've, we've uh, obviously when we started off, we started off only with the entry level exams. Um, then uh, so the exams are basically split into three categories: uh, entry levels, professional, and expert. Um, entry level is basically anybody who wants to get into pen testing but may not necessarily have an active understanding of how to run tools and you know maybe lacking experience, but they still have good fundamental understanding of how things work okay so this is um, an entry level exam from us this is this is a multiple choice questions 60 questions 60 minutes this this because it's a multiple choice question this particular exams or essentials exams is ai proctored so people are not allowed to use internet uh, and um, i'll give you some examples of how the entry level exams look like then the uh, professional and the expert exams are practical exams in which people will be given a vpn access and they will vpn into our application or network and then do the hacking and submit the flags on our exam portal the professional exams again i have different exams available under them so appsec pen tester network pen tester android pen tester ios pen tester and lastly we've launched an exam on llm pen testing which i am super super excited about we've done a pre-launch on this um, we are going to mail out the first batch of exams in another 10 days time and uh, we are we are really really excited about this. So we basically built a chatbot, and in the chatbot you have to conf you have to submit a prompt, and that prompt will hopefully make the chatbot reveal some secrets, and in that secrets there are flags, and it's it's beautifully engineered. We spent a lot of time uh, making this exam, and I'm really hoping people will love it. Nice. Um, then we have the expert category exam. This is what we call as the black belt um, or the most advanced categories. So um, an easy way to compare it would be if you are familiar with the CREST standards. So this will be the CCT level, um, you know, which mimics the CCT level of CREST. And this mm -hmm. will be the CRT level, which the CREST mimics. Now, we mm -hmm. will probably be expanding this range in time to come. But again, in my opinion, you know, a vast majority of people uh, or parent testing population would possibly reside in the professional category. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, you know, and again, look, maybe there are consultants out there who are only interested in doing iOS pen testing, right? And so, which, which exam do you point them to? OSCP is not the answer for everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We need we need these specialized exams which basically test people at this category in all these subject matter subject matters. And I think this is where I hope the industry will see us as what or will un will understand and get behind our our rationale. Yeah, and I th I think that's super important because yeah, because and, and, I remember studying for OSCP, and I said this many many times. After that, you don't really know anything. You still mm -hmm. can't pen test, and, and that's the god honest truth. Like unless you're a pen tester and your job's like, oh, you need this gold standard like OSCP, but that's just telling me, you know, telling someone that you can do a CTF, that you can do some Voln hub machines inside of a network. That's pretty much, you know, at least from six years ago. Now I know they added Active Directory uh, section. So going to the, and that leads to my next question. So for example, network pen tester, is that just like an external pen test or is that like, okay, like we're going to be hacking Active Directory as well because that's considered within a network. 
So yes. So what what uh, what is a modern day network look like? And that's a that's a really good question, Patrick. And I'm glad you asked me on the fly. We didn't not script this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> not scripted. Yeah, uh, exactly. So this is a very good question. You put me on the spot, but I think this is an excellent question. So let's have a look at the exam syllabus, right? And what does it talk about? So it talks about Windows Active Directory hacking. It okay. Talks about, it talks about um, some Kerberos thing. Okay, nice. it, it talks about some lateral movements, persistent techniques. It mm -hmm. also talks about Unix vulnerabilities. Okay, nice. and um, some, some application server flaws. And does it um, talk anything about um, cloud? There is some cloud resources also. Yes, if you look at the exam syllabus, sorry, I missed it. Hang on. Yeah, here, cloud services. Cloud yeah. is part of network net, network these days, whether you like it or not, right? Yeah. It's very hard to imagine any internal network not linked to a public or private cloud. Absolutely. So, so a modern day network pen testing exams need to, to answer to your question quite brutally. You need to cover Active Directory. You need to cover Linux. You need to cover cloud. Yeah, exactly. And I think those three three things right. are, are so cru crucial. Like even if it's something with Kubernetes going up to a cloud right. and some kind of bucket or something, because no matter what, you, you're doing something, like you said, you're linking to something in the cloud, right. no, no matter what. So in the uh, you know in this professional category, network pen test, we would expect people to have decent understanding of you know uh, network pen test covering all these regions. We would not expect them to be an absolute master into active active directory hacking or cloud hacking or Linux hacking because mm -hmm. that will follow into the expert categories in which we isolate the departments even further. But mm -hmm. yeah, basic overall understanding of these things is important. So look, this is what our thinking and rationale has been, you know, for for these. And I can possibly show you some some. If you look at this sample video here, you'll get a better. What is CN Pen? Certified Network Pen Tester, or CN Pen, is an intermediate level exam from our professional exams bundle. It tests a candidate's practical knowledge on core concepts of network security. One should be able to demonstrate hands-on knowledge on internal and external network penetration testing to pass this exam. Are you an aspiring network security enthusiast? Then this one's for you. So I'm just going to skip it to the part in which we know people can see what the exam actually looks like. Yeah. So for example, this is the exam portal. Once you log into the um, exam portal. So once you once you start the exam, you will be given access to an exam portal. You will ha also have ex access to the VPN through which you will do the hacking. And after you do the hacking, you will submit the answer in the exam portal. And that's where you will get the pass, fail, or pass with merit certificate instantly on the exam portal. And here is a question, for example, exam that covers a wide area. Oh, sorry. I was just going to pause it here so people can see. Exploit a weakness on, on this server and read the content of the file this. And please provide the value of the flag below. So, you know, mm -hmm. fairly 201 kind of an exercise. Again, yeah. um, the, the question is pretty clear. And again, we don't um, because so, you know, and here, here comes the challenge. We want to assess candidates knowledge within the given time frame. We don't want him to fail because we didn't provide him the enough time frame. So we try to pinpoint the candidate and basically say, look, here is the target. Here mm -hmm. is the objective, so you don't have to do too much reconnaissance, etc. And it's mm -hmm. a pretty open, it's a pretty well defined question. Yeah, know? it's pretty clear. Yeah, and yeah. I remember on the on the beta one, it was very very straight to the point. Like right, right, right. Yeah, and that's that's how you basically utilize all the time window in the best possible manner. Exactly. No, exactly. Because you, you know, to do too much recon, you can especially the rabbit holes that we go down as as pen testers, we can go down for hours and hours just looking for one thing and look it's only four hours left now we're fucked mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. yep. so um that was just a little a wide on. area of topics from network let me just see if there was anything else important yeah and then there's some some screencast of things happening you can see active directory hacking there is a module on that not module but an exam on that is we allow people to run metasploit and mm -hmm. things like that you know um obviously the expert level exams that um that are here um you know um sorry i yeah if i go back here um so the expert level exams we've got currently two of them they are so the professional exams are, are four hours expert exams are seven hours so they are a little bit more intense and here you know maybe we will not point you quite as much into this mm -hmm. and we've got a little bit more time to play with plus the complexity of the challenge will be also difficult absolutely yeah makes sense because obviously for a professional level versus expert you should know all that and some 
mm-hmm. at the professional level. Excuse me, at the expert level, you should know the professional level and some. Yeah. So look, and one of the things that uh, you know, right now, a lot of again, our exams are fairly cheap. People can afford. And mo- um, another point is that our exams comes with one free retest. So nice. you know, for example, this exam comes with one retest. So if anybody is prepared preparing to take crest and while we would love to be in a in, in a space where people are comparing us to crest like to like and hopefully in two years time i will achieve that but in the time frame in the time being while we are not there and when we are getting there people are u- using our exams to test their you know preparation for the crest exams yeah that's and, awesome and uh, in that process they are they're appreciating our exams uh, so yeah while we get there you can use us as a stepping stone towards that. <laughs> that's sick. That's sick. So th- that's definitely good to know for those folks that are looking to do like the CRT and and all that good stuff. Right. Or CPT. Right. Is it CPT? CPT. Certified pen tester, right? Well, we have our own, um, uh, you know, we, we don't have certified pen tester because they are all pen testing exams. We have certified yeah. network pen tester, mobile pen tester, Android pen tester, things like that. Yeah. Great. So this is a little bit about the exams. Um, you know, um, the, we, we also, if you follow us on LinkedIn, you will also find other content. We give away a lot of content um, for people to prepare for these exams and motivate them into things like if you are, if you want to prepare for our exams, our LinkedIn channel is probably a very good feed for you to follow and, uh, you know, get a little insight into our world. Nice. Yeah. And, and I'll definitely put that inside of the description below so everyone can link to it so that'll be uh that'll be amazing so yeah. do you i guess to end it do you want to show the yeah, uh, yeah. Code? So, first of all guys thanks a lot for you know um to tuning into this podcast and pat thank you so much for for having me on this podcast before i end you know we've created a discount code it's called uh, patrick hyphen capin hyphen 90. okay this will give people a 90 percent discount on the capin exam and Capin exam is by far one of our most popular exams. So if I share the right screen, I can tell you which one is the Capin exam. So please do note down this code, uh, Patrick hyphen Capin hyphen 90. Um, this is limited to, I think, 50 people only. So the first 50 people watching this podcast can utilize it. Nice. Uh, and I hope people like it. And if there is a if there is a good demand, we might do something more for different exams on a different podcast. And, uh, you know, let's see. Um, yeah, so if I just quickly share my screen, I can talk to people about the Capin exam. So yep, this, here we go. Um, this is the Capin exam. This is again a professional category application pen test, one of the most popular exams that we have, right? So it is currently at 250 pounds with the discount code. You can avail it for 25 pounds, and in 25 pounds, you will get two takes on this exam. This is the yeah. best 25 pound that you will spend on your career. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or I think that's equivalent to, I don't know how many dollars, like $30, $35, dollars, something like yeah. that. You know? Yeah. So you can't beat that. Big Mac. Big Mac. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Today, you're like a whole You only have one take on the Big Mac. Yeah. And this one, you can have two takes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. So, you know, I want to say thank you so much for uh, sharing all this and hopefully everyone can find some use for for this and like i said let me just make this uh this so yeah like i'll be in vegas this week you know i would love to hang out with you I, obviously uh we can check some stuff out together link up finally in person and uh like sid said in the beginning like obviously if you guys are at black hat defcon link up with him hit him up and uh talk some business so sure, that's sure. all like that's all i got today and uh i want to say thank you and everyone for watching please like subscribe follow Sid, follow the SecOps group. And uh, I want to say much love and thank you. Thank you, Pat. And I'm looking forward to meeting you in person in DEF CON, yeah? Likewise.